I was just looking back at uh, replays from 2005 Electronic Sports World Cup back when I was in Team 4 Kings and I played against the uh, SK Deadman and the meta back then on Lost Temple was Farseer first and Farseer was really quite good on this map because you could easily creep your natural expansion I think this replay is sped up by the way I think they're going to slow it down uh, by the time that uh, the game actually begins and we start fighting but back then Farseer was the meta and I remember getting on stage and launching like a little versus AI game and the AI went Warden and I was like huh Warden that could actually be quite good against me uh, against Farseer no one ever really went for Warden Deadman didn't really go for Warden he was always going Demon Hunter but I thought there's something in that AI randomly picks their hero so it has no meaning but it had meaning to me and then I switched from Farseer to Blade and, by the, and then when I actually got contact with him and I saw that he had Warden, I was like, yes! <laughs> and I think he was surprised too, because uh, the game ended up being not that, uh, not that hard, if I recall correctly. I mean, it's a long time ago, but I remember my position that I started on the left, that he was top, that he was Warden. The reason Warden was good is because Warden has Shadow Melt, so she can hide at the healing fountain. She can wake up the creeps, and then she can hide at the healing fountain uh, and keep healing there. But then the Farseer cannot heal there, and every time Farseer comes back, she wakes up the creeps and hides again. So she essentially has map control of the healing fountain. This is where I saw, oh, he has, he has Warden. I'm going to try to mess with him so that he doesn't get level 2 from the natural expansion. Killed one Wisp already, and I'm going to steal the creep didn't get any item from the looks of it and it looks like back then in 2005 the item drops were still different i saw that he got a tome of whatever he got some form of tome uh, and he has potion of rejuvenation nowadays lost temple drops a clause of attack or a circlet or something there gloves of haze rings of protection this is a slightly worse item the consumable so he really wants to expand he puts up his expansion right then and there it's a very early one but i am constantly making grunts i've got three on the field already and this is why he keeps shadow striking my blades because he figures hey if i keep shadow striking the blade you're gonna get hurt you're gonna have to go away you're probably gonna heal at the fountain it's gonna take 20 seconds to move there 25 to move back to my expansion that's 45 you're gonna have to stay there for 30 seconds to heal by that time the tree of life will be nearly done and I think his calculations were correct in that. And I also didn't see him make the expansion. So there I am, healing. I'm apparently satisfied to let my grunt keep hitting the moon well. Maybe I've got pillage, because otherwise I don't see how that's part of a long-term plan to just whack his moon well with a single grunt. But at least I know you're going to try and attack this. You're going to shadow strike it. And I'm probably going to be able to save it with body blocks and then heal at the fountain. That's some pretty nice body blocks. If I really, this is really good. I feel like my mechanics in 2005 were a lot better than in 2003 already. Remember that Night Elf game that we watched earlier? Where uh, I didn't even surround Where from the Cyclone? Here, point. body blocking is already there. So, moving towards his expo, I feel like maybe I have a suspicion that he's expanding. If I go there right away, there might still be a chance to get the cancel. But the two grunts that were hurt, I'm sending them down, as you can see on the mini-map. And I think I'm going to go back to the healing fountain. As I get to the expo, the tree is 90% done. I don't think I'm going to be able to cancel it anymore. But I'm probably going to hit it anyway. Because why wouldn't you? At least you make sure it's like 75% health when it finishes. Yeah, it doesn't really feel super valuable, I must say. Am I gonna TP out here eventually? Because he's gonna Shadow Strike. I might lose a Grunt. I really don't know what decisions I made back then. Meanwhile, Grunt's healing at the Fountain. Probably gonna lose that one Grunt. Come back, hit the Arches a bit. I could go cancel the Gold Mine, actually. Wait, what language is that? Oh, it's uh, Russian Warcraft 3. Whoever watched this replay and put it on YouTube is using the Russian Warcraft 3. I've never heard it before. I played with Spanish, Dubsy 3, uh, Spanish, French, and German. And Korean, I think, didn't have their own language yet. I mean, Korea had its own language. It's called Hangul, and they speak it in Korea. They speak it really well, because 
They're born with it. It's their official language. But I mean, Warcraft 3 didn't have a Korean dub. There's an easy way to know if it's Russian dub C3. They don't have shadows on units. Yeah, I see it. But why don't they, Jason White? Uh-oh, I'm towering him. Okay. And he's still level one, I think, because I denied. Wait, Hex or Snakes? Oh, yeah. All right. Melon strategy is in action. He just got level two. Grunts, Shadow, and Tower Rush. Yeah, before his expansion is really counting. Hey, that's a good decision. I applaud my uh, tower decision. Just make Snakes, hit the, hit the units, and cancel the towers. And then make towers again. I love it. I love it. I still have a unit at the fountain. I need to bring it away from the healing fountain. He is 24 life. This is the grand finals of ESWC 2005. And I think the first place prize, if I don't recall wrongly, was $13,000. Uh, I mean, I, I, can, I can take a look. Hold on. Uh, I think it was 13,000. Uh, yeah, $13,000. Best of three grand finals. Yeah, he's, he's made an archer because they're like more uh, safe against uh, serpent wards. They help kill and they don't take as much damage, but they take a lot of damage from grunts. He used clarity potion to try and shadow strike shadow more. Shadow is like a big problem. He ran out of moonwell juice, taking down that tower. I canceled it so I don't lose all the resources. Immediate remake. I should, yeah. I should have put that Serpent Ward like a little bit lower so that he can't walk through, but it actually ends up working against him. He's stuck. He kills the Shadow, but not before the Warden dies first. Blade is, I believe, level two. What's that? Ancient of Wonders, second Ancient of Wonders, so that he can make it night more often. He does have double income. Yeah, he's losing a lot of units. It's full panic mode for him now. Another Ancient of War coming out. He's got 10 wisps in gold, so he can make a lot of stuff. But there's a lot of pressure. Warden is only 30% back. On this version of Lost Temple, there was no tavern yet. So you couldn't buy Pandaren Brewmaster or Tinker or Fire Lord. And you also couldn't insta-revive Warden. So if you killed a hero, it was actually dead for a while. What's with this resolution? This resolution is a result of the temporary awkward transition period the adolescence of the internet if you will or of the technique where widescreen started becoming a thing it wasn't 4x3 crt monitor anymore but the technology hadn't caught up yet to allow oh warning cancel it hadn't got to the point yet where it would actually show more terrain left and right and that the ui could be scaled based on people having widescreens because blizzard had it hadn't like patched warcraft 3 for that that actually only came with reforged it's one of the good things reforged brought us true widescreen and the only way true widescreen works is if it also literally gives you an in-game advantage by showing more left and right horizons this is the alternative where you can use it but it's stretched and therefore fake a 4x4 looks like a 4x6 with this resolution Wow, this is still uh, pretty close. I managed to cart over a catapult all the way from back home. Cancelling one AP with the Grunt Raider and Sh Shadow Hunter. Killed that. He didn't cancel it. Ah, GG. That's GG. First game, 1-0. Shall we watch game 2-2? Two, two? Let's watch game 2 as well. It's really cool they got uh, links to it. I didn't expect that. <coughs> the W champions here's game number two i think i'm bottom spot there was no force yeah there we go so interesting story about this match uh game number two best of three grand finals eswc 2005 right uh you had a 33 percent chance to be close positions which would be uh here and here and that is the shortest rush distance, rush distance Warcraft 3 has ever had in the history of Warcraft 3. So I immediately scout for it, you see, with my peon over here. Uh, there's a 33% chance that it's cross map. And there's a 33% chance that it's what I call semi-cross. 
which is that you're on opposite sides over here. And the thing about this map, this map is and was fairly Night Elf favorite. I would say that the worst is semi-cross map, where I would say you have maybe 30% chance to win. Then there's cross map, which is a little better. You have maybe 40% chance to win. And then there was close pulse, and close pulse was pretty bad, but it was really good if you cheese them with Farseer and Beastmaster and Towers. I would say you had 90% chance to win if you open Farseer and it's, and it's uh, close pulse. So the decision I was trying to make here, do I go for a Farseer first, getting a near guaranteed win, 90% on the 30 33% chance that it happens, which, if you average it out, you can make a kind of expected value evaluation. Or do I play for Blade and play for the 30, 40, slash 45% win chance that I have on the three different positions? If you believe those percentages are true, of course, because I made them up out of my ass. And so I was trying to decide whether I was going to gamble and get a free win. Or if I was going to play for real, like a Chad, but always have a disadvantage. And I decided to play like a Chad. I was 1-0 and I got this position and I was like, well, this isn't good, but I just gave it my best. So here we go. I crept the turtles, I'm level 1.5, and he crept his turtles and he's level 1.5. But what I can see is that uh, he didn't creep that fast. Because he came over to Mana Burn. In the nowadays meta, Night Elf would be level 2 by the time you come here at this time. But instead, he chose to quote unquote waste his time with the current meta information. And he came to meet me to Mana Burn me. So now we're actually in an equal spot where we have the same amount of creeps. And people don't play like this anymore. But back then, obviously, he's in the finals. He was one of the best. And he was a very tough opponent. The expected value for Farseer should be 30% for Blade 26.7. Right, but I didn't state yet how Free Farseer... For you. Keep up the good stream. I didn't state yet how Farseer would perform and how Blade would perform on the cross map semi-cross. I would have to like have a percentage... I would have to have six percentages for you to be able to make a valid EV based on my uh, theories, right? But yeah, I felt it was pretty close either way. So I go all the way back home. I've got the four grunts. I'm gonna tank with the grunts so that my clarity heal self can continue. He's got boots. I wonder if I got boots as well. No, not yet. I have staff of teleport actually. Oh no! Oh my god, I got I got heal self cancelled on my blades by moving away your grunt. Misplay, total misplay. I wonder what hero I'm going. TC second or shadow second? I feel like TC seconds was the meta back then, and it's better. Is that what I'm gonna do? And he's probably gonna go play Druids of the Talon. Let me see it. Yeah, Torrent Chieftain. And he puts a sentry here, and he's gonna come for a cancel on the beast tree. What's his second hero? He's going shop. Double Ancient of Wind. And there's his Beastmaster. Cancel the bestiary. I have no tech buildings in production right now. And instead of harassing with his beast and, and demon, I can see he's going to creep with his beastmaster. You see right here? So I currently have no tier 2 buildings. And he's deciding to creep. And he also left my main base with his demon. And that feels unnecessary. He could cancel my bestiary and totem over and over again. And he's not doing it. So I'm now building my bestiary and totem. Or Lodge. I think back then it was Spirit Lodge that made the, the Tauren Walkers, right? He's leaving them come up without any legal justification that they should be coming up. Because I never came home. I'm still over here. So they're coming up, but they didn't, didn't have a right to get up. Having said that, Demon 3... Beastmaster level ups, items, those are all really valuable for, uh, those are all really valuable for Night Elf, no problem. I'm not sure about this whole blade archer attacking journey. I kill one archer for like 200 mana. I'm almost dead and I have no heal solve with me. Yeah, I don't like this play much at all. 
The good thing about this is that I'm currently also creeping with Tarn Chieftain, hopefully not losing any grunts. But I don't think that was a good play. It's much better to stay near and to just uh, keep eye on him. I staff to the TC, get the heal solve. That's nice. Yeah, God, we did get a lot better, man, back then. We got better now uh, compared to then. Of course, not in every way, but uh, knowledge increases. You stand on each other's shoulders of knowledge. Uh, where's my uh, spirit lodge? Huh? What? Hey, man. I don't have a spirit lodge. Thanks for the raid. I don't have a spirit lodge. Hey, SDTQ Bert. You don't happen to be... No, you're not Gert from YouTube. No spirit lodge. Surround micro is worse nowadays, I would say. I don't think so. I think counter surround micro is better. W3 history. Huh. Am I still going to add a spirit lodge? I feel like my base got bigger. I think I added a delayed spirit lodge. Yeah, I would definitely beat 2005 me, Grelorn. Of course, I would have to relearn the patch back then. Even though I'm kind of out of shape, I still think I would beat 2005 me now. But it's because so much new knowledge was gained for everyone. No one then was able to beat me when I win tourneys, right? A lot of people would beat the players back then. But I remember especially like some games in 2k5 and also 2k7, 8, 9, 10, there was really high level of play that I didn't see come again in recent times for a long time. So it's like, it's not totally one-sided or anything like that. I wonder if I'm gonna get war mill upgrades. I've got so many grunts. I actually went to get a sixth grunt against Why talents. Grunts are pretty decent for creeping. Definitely not as good as archers. But they're decent, but they're pretty weak against talents. But you see that in his style as well. He's also got five archers. I killed one and he's still got four. So we both just have more tier one. Skipping more tier one to get more tech units really became a thing much, much later. I always liked a lot of tier one back in those days. Uh, among the orcs, it was mostly only Lin that experimented with one burrow fast teching. And it felt pretty risky and suicidal but he made it work sometimes it wasn't his standard meta if it was standard it wouldn't work for him but he did it sometimes he knew about the advantages and tried to use that i remember when we signed up for four kings they said we used to have grubby as our player this must be far back wow kipper cat was that like um the new four kings because the old four kings kind of died in 2007-8 uh, with a lot of debts over hundred thousand dollars in debts just to players i don't know how they scammed the sponsors and then they just started hiring new teams and i feel like that can't happen if you have debts you can't just give it over to new management because they sold it to someone and then start hiring teams and having sponsors again without settling the old debts. That doesn't make any sense. So I always had a lot of uh, disdain for new Four Kings uh, management and, and so on because of that. Yeah, I think so. Didn't know much about gaming orcs. Yeah, of course, we, didn't, we all didn't know anything. I really enjoyed my time in Four Kings, no regrets. Has uh, building layout changed a lot since these old times? Yep, building layouts got better. So, no walkers actually. It's all grunts and raiders. Look, the micro isn't good either. I'm ensnaring hero and I'm focusing hero. And then I back off with everything. Rather than weaving my raiders into talents. It looks like I kind of want to control his heroes. Get a lot of shockwaves. For some reason his demon and beast both chased my uh, blade. And then everybody came back and I keep moving back all my units. It's all about like, back then it was all about like mass shockwaves because shockwaves were considered the only way that you could kill talents. 
but I think micro got better. Look, five of my units are attacking heroes, which is a complete waste of uh, damage. Every grunt should be on archers, every raider should be on talents, and it's not easy, but uh, it's the right thing to do. He focused blade, but I have heal potion. Good amount of talents are dying. I like the protection scroll, that's super useful. It basically offsets a lot of that armor debuff that the talents are doing. Looks like Blade ran down and killed Fire Lord. We're bringing the peons over. There are no casters. There is no way to stop Cyclone. But we just have so much stuff. Going back with the staff. Getting some heal solves, presumably. And he gives up. GG. We win. 2-0. <laughs> That's it. That's the East of WC 2003 Grand Finals. 4-3 against 2-1-1. One, one. All right. GG. Wow. It felt a lot more epic in my mind. Don't you think? Welcome to the greatest versus AI. Back there? I feel like it felt more epic in my mind, but uh, I guess it's still cool. Good memories. GG.